All right, so what is the square root method? Well, when we were dealing with equations that were in this form, y equals ax squared minus c, we could apply the difference of two squares, factoring by the difference of two squares, if and only if a was a square number and c was a square number. That was the only time we could solve by factoring using the difference of two squares. Well, in both of these cases, I only have one squared, I only have one variable, and then my c could be positive or negative, and I have an a. So what we're going to do for the square root method is we're simply going to isolate our x squared. Now, why do we not have to use factoring? Well, the important thing, we don't have to use factoring because we only have one variable. It's just like when we're dealing with a linear equation, we combined all of our variables together. So we had one variable, and then what we would do is isolate that variable, get all, all the other numbers to the other side, and then we'd say, all right, x equals or y or whatever variable equals this. Well, since we only have one variable, we can do that as well, just like a linear equation. But the important thing we need to understand is, we do not want to solve for x squared. We need to still solve for the value of x, not x squared. So we need to undo the squaring. And the inverse operation of squaring is going to be the square root. And the important thing to remember is when you take the square root of a number, when you introduce the square root, you have to include plus or minus. So I'm just going to kind of show you these two arbitrary values on what we're going to do. So first of all, solving, we're going to make sure they're both equal to 0. Right? We're going to set the output equal to 0. And then we're just going to do the inverse operation. So I'll subtract c on both sides. In this case, if it was minus c, I'd add c on both sides. Therefore, I'd have negative c equals a times x squared. c equals a times x squared. Now remember, um, sometimes a is going to be 1. right? But still, let's pretend a is a number um, other than 1. You're still going to divide e divided on both sides. But obviously, if a is already 1, you don't need to use the inverse operation of that. But it's just important to know that by using that inverse operation, it divides out to 1. So therefore, in this case, I have negative c over a equals x squared. In this case, I have positive c over a equals x squared. And that's very important because when we look at a problem we're solving by the square root method, if we have plus, that means I'm going to be taking the square root of a negative number, which is going to produce our imaginary solutions of i. So therefore, anyways, to get the now right now we're solving for x squared. So therefore, I'm going to need to take the square root of x squared to isolate it. And when taking the square root, I need to make sure I include now plus or minus. So in this case, I'm taking the square root of a negative number. So it's going to be x equals plus or minus the square root of positive c over a. And then since we're taking the square root of a negative number, we're going to leave it with i. Over here, it would just be x equals plus or minus the square root of c over a. And there's a couple different things. You know, We need to make sure we rationalize the denominator. You can break this up. The square root of c over a can be broken up into the square root of c divided by the square root of a. We also work, we're also going to look into some examples where we're going to rationalize the denominator and so forth. But in the general case of solving by the square root method, this is the process that we're going to use. Thanks.